Chiefs have been looking for a tough winger. Craig has 432 penalty minutes in 248 career games. Toronto will have to compensate Dallas for signing Craig. Reports out of Detroit say preliminary tests showed Bob Probert had been using cocaine when he was recently arrested for drunken driving. Police are conducting further blood tests based on the preliminary screening. Probert, who recently signed with Chicago, was in a motorcycle accident July 15th. His blood alcohol level at the time of the wreck was more than three times the legal limit. Cork will cost Cleveland slugger Albert Bell just six days instead of ten. Bell's suspension for using a cork bat was reduced by <laughs> President Bobby Brown. Bell will miss a grand total of seven games. The slugger's bat was confiscated by umpires in Chicago at the request of White Sox manager Gene Lamont. The bat later disappeared from the umpire's dressing room. Then it was returned by the Indians. But Bell obviously doesn't need the cork. He had 26 homers when the bat was taken. He's homered in seven of his last nine games. In quarterfinal action at the Canadian Open Tennis Championship in Toronto, number four seed Jim Courier, who had a little trouble with Thomas Engvist of Sweden. He moved into the semis with a 6-2, 6-2 victory. Jason Stoltenberg of Australia defeated 15th seed Richie Renneberg in straight sets. As the weekend sets in, the final weekend of the Just for Last Festival. Just check it. Just check it. Here's a couple of sporting highlights on our dinner hour package that deserve some notice. First of all, dessert. You know, there's always room for jello. Depends on how you want it. This is how you go. And this is a fondue gone awry. And if you are at least queasy, turn away. This is when you're poking around, you know, in the cheese and you've dropped your bread and you just sort of hit something. This is what you call not paying attention. This guy was okay, by the way. And, of course, you've got to have a main course. They're at the post. They're off. It's the Wiener Dog Derby, ladies and gentlemen, and as you can see, Blitzen in the lead. Oh, little mustard on that one, but he gets across the line. Everybody's healthy. Yep. Uh, the dog's life. That's it. Thank you very much, Rob. I needed that. We'll be right back. Do you love Oriental food? Me too. Especially when I don't have to go out to get it. With Uncle Ben's sweet and sour sauce, you can stay home and cook up this elegant idea. Spread sautéed onions in a baking dish, arrange chicken on top, add the sweet and sour sauce, and bake. Ah, perfect golden glazed chicken. Dining in just doesn't get any better. Uncle Ben's sauces. Do taste the difference only Uncle Ben's can make. And for more ideas, keep watching. Le Piment Rouge, Montreal's celebrated Szechuan restaurant. Elegant ambiance. World-class team of chefs. Impeccable service. Exquisite dishes to savor. Reception room for business and private affairs. Le Piment Rouge. Unparalleled. How do you get the most long distance for the least money? From Sprint Canada. The most means 50% off on the person you talk to most each month. One in Canada, one in the U.S., and one overseas. Keep talking. The least means a guaranteed lower rate on all your long distance and no extra fees. Isn't communication wonderful? Get the most for the least. From Sprint Canada. You can't expect me to stay here and not avenge my own godson's murder. Dax joins a band of Klingon warriors. Come and fight with us. On a mission of vengeance. I took a blood oath to avenge his death. Now she'll turn her back on Starfleet. What about the laws of the Federation? And risk her life. It is a good day to die. In a battle to the death. Get them! On the next episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Tonight at 8 on CFCF 12. They used to hold their children and kiss their lovers and dream of their futures and love their lives. They used to be just like you and me. They didn't think breast cancer would kill them. Every day, thousands of women die and thousands more live in denial of this disease. What is it going to take to stop it? What will it take to wake us up? What every woman needs to know to survive next Oprah. Join me weekdays at four on CFCF 12. Ben Wicks for the International Year of the Family. 
I have three children and four grandchildren, so I know what it's like uh, to have the family unit around me. It's not easy. I mean, nobody ever said it was easy. Bringing up kids is one of the most difficult things, as well as one of the most wonderful things that you can have as an experience. Uh, you've got to make the effort. Let's work together to keep our families healthy and strong. A man wielding a shotgun opened fire outside an abortion clinic today in Pensacola, Florida. He killed two people, one of them a doctor wearing a bulletproof vest. We have two reports, the first from Al Dale in Pensacola, Florida. The victims were sitting in a pickup truck near the entrance to the abortion clinic. A man with a 12-gauge shotgun approached and fired several rounds, killing Dr. John Britton and his armed bodyguard, 74-year-old James Barrett, who was driving. The bodyguard's wife was wounded. An eyewitness said it happened without warning. And I heard a shot. I turned around and looked, seen a guy running up to the fence. Within minutes, police arrived and arrested 40-year-old Paul Hill, a local anti-abortion activist known for advocating violence against abortion doctors. Now is the time to defend the unborn in the same way you defend slaves about to be murdered. Hill was charged with two counts of murder and one of attempted murder. Dr. Britton, who had just arrived from Jacksonville for his Friday appointments at the clinic, regularly wore a bulletproof vest. In an interview last year, Dr. Britton said he was just being prudent. I'm not any really, really any more afraid than I would be in any other uh, um, situation where one has to use precautions. It was a precaution he began after taking over the practice of Dr. David Gunn, who was shot and killed at another clinic in this city last year. But the vest didn't help. He was shot in the head. The suspect is well known to local police for his violent rhetoric at demonstrations here. Abortionists are murderers. Murderers should be executed. Hill will make his first appearance in court tomorrow morning. Al Dale, ABC News, Pensacola. This is Bill Blakemore. Paul Hill has been openly promoting this kind of violence for months. For months. As the police use force to stop a murderer, sometimes you have to use force to stop people from killing innocent children. A father of three and former Presbyterian minister thrown out of his church for these views, Hill claimed on Nightline eight months ago to have many followers. My organization, Defensive Action, has, uh, presently has 28 ministers and priests and pro-life leaders who are openly justifying the use of force in order to defend innocent life. Including shooting doctors? Whatever is necessary. There is a small but growing number of people around the country who publicly advocate such violence to protect fetuses. If your life or mine were in imminent danger right this second, you wouldn't want someone holding a sign on the sidewalk? When Dr. David Gunn was murdered in Pensacola last year, his killer claimed to have been inspired by local Operation Rescue leader and ex-Klansman John Burt. Burt claimed no direct responsibility, but predicted more such violence. I think it's going to be like a war, a holy war, and people are going to get hurt on both sides. When Dr. George Tiller was shot in both arms a year ago in Kansas, his assailant said she was an admirer of one John Brockhoff, who promotes what he calls justifiable force. It's not murder, it's uh, hum justifiable homicide. The Catholic Church profoundly disagrees. Anyone who tries to forestall evil as a private party by killing is wrong ethically, legally, and morally. National right to life leaders condemned today's killings outright. Uh, killing is not pro-life. No one who is truly pro-life could kill anyone in the name of protecting unborn children. But pro-choice groups believe they now face a dangerous new pro-violence movement. Last year there were more than 300 violent attacks against abortion clinics. In the past two years such attacks have more than doubled. Bill Blakemore, ABC News. A fiery and tragic conclusion to a hostage drama in Russia. It began as a bus hijacking, but it ended when police refused to let a getaway helicopter take off. It happened in Russian, what Russian officials describe as the most unruly and unstable regions of Russia, a former resort that is now known more for its crime than anything else. David Ensor has the details. This is how it looked on the airport tarmac in Mineral Nivodi as police commandos began their attack on the helicopter containing gunmen and hostages. 
there were several explosions around the aircraft and then one inside as one of the kidnappers detonated a hand grenade. Within seconds, fire erupted. Firefighters moved in to put out the blaze and the four gunmen were taken prisoner. One of them died later of his injuries. But four of their hostages were killed, three teenagers and one woman, and six members of the Russian Special Police Force Oman were also injured. The gunmen were from the breakaway province of Chechnya. The incident began Thursday when the gunmen hijacked a bus containing 41 passengers and demanded $15 million cash and a getaway helicopter. It was the fourth hijacking in eight months in the mountainous region of the Northern Caucasus, but the first where innocent lives were lost. The Russian authorities have been effective until now at showing kidnappers that their crime does not pay and that only they are the losers. The loss of life this time will increase public pressure on President Boris Yeltsin for a broader crackdown on violent crime. David Ensor, ABC News, Moscow. There's been a mortar attack on a police complex in Northern Ireland. The attack was on the same station the IRA hit nine years ago that killed nine officers. This morning, as shopkeepers in Newry were arriving for work, the IRA launched a mortar attack on the local police station. Two shells landed inside, a third in the street beyond. Several people came running down the street bleeding heavily. Uh, they were transported to hospital by private car just. These were civilians? So these were civilians at this stage, yeah. 30 people were injured in all, 25 civilians, two police officers and three soldiers, one of whom is still said to be serious. The casualty ward of the local hospital was chaotic, packed with people crying and bleeding. The Secretary of State said the IRA had accepted it would never get anywhere through democratic means. Now they're trying to destroy democracy. So I think this background of the wreckage of this business is not a bad commentary upon what these disgusting people have done today. The terrorists fired the mortars today from exactly the same place as they launched a similar attack in 1985. It killed nine people and since then the base has been reinforced that, and perhaps luck, prevented history repeating itself. Tom Bradby, ITN, Newry. Police in Spain say they suspect Basque separatists are behind a car bombing in Madrid's historic district. The explosion killed an army general who heads the Office of Defense Policy. Complete explosion. Once again, a high-ranking Spanish military officer was the target. The car bomb ripped through Plaza Romales in the morning rush hour, just as the armoured limousine of General Francisco Veguias was passing. The blast killed him, his driver and a nearby worker. Many other cars in the square were set on fire. Doors and windows were smashed. The area is near the Royal Palace and heavily frequented by tourists. As director of defence policy, the general was the army's fourth highest ranking officer. No one claimed responsibility for the attack, but authorities had little doubt it was the work of ETA, the Basque separatist group. Car bombs are a favourite weapon of ETA, which seeks independence for the Basque region in northern Spain. New findings on the virus linked to AIDS. Many pe more people with HIV are living longer than expected, and many believe they may never get full-blown AIDS. We have this report. 53-year-old Jody Wells has been HIV positive but AIDS-free for 10 years. The new research suggests that that may not be exceptional. One in four sufferers could live twice as long quite healthily before developing AIDS, but Jody believes he'll never get the disease. Oh, I'll live to a ripe old age and, and I'll begin to exhibit the... Um, deterioration of the immune system that elderly people get and they'll probably say I died of AIDS but I should probably just die of old age. The researchers studying HIV infected haemophiliacs measured levels of specific blood cells called CD4 lymphocytes. They found that they could predict when the patients developed AIDS by how quickly they lost these cells in the blood. We've made use of that to actually project into the future to, to, to provide an estimate of how many people we think will develop AIDS by 20 years after HIV infection. And we found that we think approximately 25% of individuals will remain AIDS-free by 20 years after infection. 
Doctors believe those now testing HIV positive could have a more prolonged future, especially the young who seem to live longer before developing AIDS. They can't say why patients lose lymphocyte cells faster than others, though that may be the key to finding an effective treatment for the disease. A trial date and word of a new witness have emerged from the latest evidence hearing in the O.J. Simpson case. The judge says the trial will start September the 20th. We get more from Bill Redeker. For the first time, defense attorneys said in court today that there are eyewitnesses who have information that may help exonerate O.J. Simpson. Uh, there's a report of an eyewitness uh, who was in the alleyway behind uh, Nicole Simpson's home uh, who reports uh, uh, hearing someone leaving uh, from the back gate and then two men arguing. There are witnesses there who have theories of multiple assailants of different ethnic backgrounds than Mr. Simpson. Prosecutors said Los Angeles police detectives are talking to at least one man about the murders. ABC News has learned that he is a 40-year-old burglar with a prior record who claims that he was casing Nicole Simpson's neighborhood when he saw two white men running away from the crime scene at the time the murders were committed. Legal experts say the burglar's credibility will be a key issue if he is called to testify in the upcoming trial. That's very important. This is going to be a reasonable doubt case. And if there's a credible eyewitness uh, suggesting that two white men were fleeing this residence about the time of the killing, that might very well create a sufficient reasonable doubt. The defense asked prosecutors to turn over all evidence that might help clear Simpson. Prosecutor William Hodgman said so far, his office has provided 1,300 pages of documents and more than 500 photographs. In another courtroom, prosecutors decided not to indict Al Cowlings at this time. His bail will be returned. But they have up to three years to determine whether he should be charged for helping Simpson flee on the day of the chase. Although Cowlings may have to wait for a final resolution, O.J. Simpson was told today that his trial begins on September 20th. Bill Redeker, ABC News, Los Angeles. And finally, a $150,000 tribute to the high-tech age. It has a sensor-activated soap dispenser, water faucet, hand dryer. After each use, the toilet seat is disinfected. It also sanitizes the toilet bowl. And just in case you run into trouble, a panic button alerts people that you need help. It's a street toilet in New York City, and in case you think it's heaven and want to stay after 20 minutes, the door opens automatically. Surprise. So be warned. We'll be right back. Chrysler's number one event of the summer is back. With rebates on thousands of 94 Chrysler cars and trucks. Look for vehicles that have this sticker and you could save a bundle. That's right, rebates, rebates, and more rebates. Or factory financing on thousands of 94 cars and trucks. It only comes once a year and it's going on now. The number one event of the summer, only at your local Chrysler dealer. If I was living back home, wherever the war happened, is that I think I'd have been dead, not alive, and I don't think so I would ever know Canada. And I'm very lucky to be here now. My friends accept me, they make me feel warmth, confidence, and they make me feel happy all the time. And I'm very glad that my parents immigrated to Canada because I have my life to look forward to and for my future. Canada, our future. When it gets so hot, your shorts cling to your thighs in unnatural ways. 
Your dog keeps hogging your mini fan. Your flannel shirt's just not working. And your shoes start melting to the pavement. Hey, that's when you need it big time. The big new 600 mil cool shape of Coca-Cola for the old 500 mil price. The Red Cross could ask you in many different ways. Please, give blood. The gift of blood is a gift of life. And that's Pulse for Friday, July the 28th. And now because our baseball team, the Pulse Stars, are in such popular demand, they've added extra days to their playing schedule. They're going to be playing tonight, Friday, with the crew from Levitt at the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Park in Outremont. Game time, 7 o'clock. I'm Atsumi Takahashi. Have a good weekend. Star Trek The Next Generation, Saturday at 7.